12 reasons why you should quit going to a local church of a body of believers. And yes, I am being sarcastic. The reason I'm talking about this is because of this viral post I found recently, which highly relates to what I just talked about. 12 reasons why I as a pastor have decided to quit attending sporting events. See if you can find a parallel between these 12 things and the 12 reasons why whether you should go to a local body of believers at a church. The coach never came to visit me. Do you expect your pastor or the leaders in the church to always visit you and to kind of like pat you on the back and do all that? I don't. Sometimes people have this idea that if you're the pastor of the church and you're getting paid from the church, then you should go do your duty, so to speak, and visit everyone in the church. But did you know that there's much more that a pastor can do for the body of Christ than to visit you? Now, I'm not saying he can't visit you. Of course, a pastor should visit the local body of believers. But if you're not going to church just for the reason of the pastor not visiting, you maybe you gotta check your heart number two every time i went they asked for money if you're at church and you don't like the time and they're taking up the offering then maybe you have to ask god why is it that i don't like to hear that or actually like to do that did you know that the accountant that i have personally and for my business he actually owns a christian ministry teaching people how to do finances biblically and he says that there are very very little percentage of people will actually give to the work of god now i'm not just saying giving money to your local church i'm actually of the belief that we should give to the church of jesus christ around the world so there are ministries that are in need of finances actually give to those ministries more so than the traditionally taught doctrine of you have to give everything to the local body of believers because in matthew chapter 25 when jesus comes back he's gonna say have you visited the poor clothed and naked and given a drink to those who don't have water to drink so if you only go to this church where they're having a lot of buildings and programs that are not really reaching out to other people and the majority of the budget is used to pay down the mortgage the land the office the salaries the building the programs to serve the people in the church then you have to ask god and pray god is this bear you want me to put my money because at the end of the day this is not my money it's your money i'm just being a steward number three people sitting in a row didn't seem very friendly hey listen if you go to church people aren't friendly be the friendly person go and shake someone's hand don't just go talk to people that you always talk with be the person you want someone to be to you when you're new to a church Number four, the seats are very hard. We're in a day and age where a lot of seats in church buildings are very good. They're not pews anymore. They're actually very comfortable, so I don't think this matters. Number five, the referees made a decision I didn't agree with. Sometimes you're gonna go to church, you're gonna have leaders who don't agree specifically with what you believe in or what you do. Now, here's the thing. If you're doing sin, if you're living in a life that's not pleasing to God and they're confronting you and you don't like that, you need to change. However, if you are obeying God, the commandments in Jesus Christ in the Bible, and if the leaders don't like it, then you're gonna do two things number one leave a church and go to somewhere else where god is leading you to go to so you can sit under the teaching that is biblical and that is pleasing to god or number two you stay fired up yourself you read the bible you do the will of god and you do the work of god aside from church because you're only just meeting them maybe once a week but what about the rest of the week what are you doing make sure you're doing the work of god and loving jesus every single day because when you do that your fire can rub off to those who are in church even if you don't agree with them number six i was sitting with hypocrites they only came to see what others were wearing we all know that in the church there are hypocrites why because you have once been that way i have once been that way there are times when we've said something and have done another and at those times we say god please forgive us help us to live a life pleasing to you and help us live lives that are not hypocritical so that those who want to follow you can follow you and won't be turned off by our behaviors number seven some games went into overtime and i was late getting home today in churches there's such a need of people to say oh i gotta get home after one hour or an hour and a half service they don't want to stay any longer but when i hear of all the revivals of old those who have done great things for the kingdom of god and have seen miracles signs and wonders happening people repenting and getting on their knees crying seeking god those revivals drag on for hours and days and even weeks but today we have a problem going to church for just one hour or two hours now i gotta tell you sometimes when you go to church if the place you're going to they're really not having a revival of god then it will feel dry then you will want to get out after an hour because it's dry who wants to sit there for an hour listening to some dead religion nobody wants to do that but if we feel the fire living god we you you can go and start your own bible study go fellowship with other people who are on fire for god doing the things of god then you don't have to feel like you're sitting there and thinking when I need to leave. 
Number eight, the band plays some songs I never heard before. When we go to church, sometimes we hear certain worship songs we're not aware of. And I get it. Sometimes it's like, well, it's hard to get into it. But then in those times, I remind myself, it's not about whether I feel it. It is about me honoring the king, honoring the one who sits on the throne and say, God, you're worthy to be worshipped. And that is why I worship you. Whether or not I know the song or not, you are worthy to be praised. Number nine, the games are scheduled on my only day to sleep in and run errands. The problem today for people to think that, oh, on my only day off on Sunday, I have to go to church, I'd rather sleep in. And the reason they're thinking about that is probably because they're not experiencing the revival fire of the living God either in the church they're going to or in their own lives. It first always starts with our own lives. If it's in our lives, then we worship God every day whether we're meeting with other people or not at our home. When no one's looking in our secret place, are we drawing divine life from divine Jesus Christ himself? Or are we just doing this some kind of a religious duty that we don't even want to do? If that is you, then of course you're going to find a chore and a waste of time to go to church or to worship God on a day that's your day off. But if you love God, you start with your own heart first in your own home, then this is probably not going to be a problem for you. Number 10, my parents took me to too many games when I was growing up. Just because your parents or someone are taking you to church and you attend church with them over and over again year after year, it doesn't mean that you're truly born again. Or worse yet, you're going to church and you're doing certain things in the Bible and yet your faith is lukewarm. Jesus warned the church who is lukewarm in the book of Revelation chapter 3. He says, I wish you were hot or cold. Because if you're cold, at least you know you need to come out of your sin and turn to God. But if you're lukewarm, you think you're okay, I go to church, I pay my money, I do this prayer here and there, but you're not really fully devoted to the kingdom of God, that is a danger because Jesus says he's going to vomit you out of his mouth. So may you and I be reminded, it doesn't matter who takes us to church or whether we're going every week or not religiously, but rather what is the most important thing is whether our lives are fully surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, whether when no one's looking and wherever we go, we know that we're honoring the living King. Because when we do that, then we know our faith is not rested on whether our parents took us to church or not, but it's us building our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Number 11, since I read a book on sports, I feel that I know more than the coaches anyway. And here's another big problem today. A lot of people, because they read certain books about a topic in the Bible, or they have certain teachers that they like, they feel that they have full knowledge of a certain topic, and that they're better than the leaders, the pastors, or other people that they talk with. But here's what the Bible says. He says that God will give grace to the humble, and he will resist the proud. So many times I'll say, God, forgive me for my pride. I repent. I humble myself to you. I pray that you reveal to me in your word what you teach in this matter because I don't want the opinions of men I want your opinion because that's the only thing that matters so if you have this attitude that you're always better than everyone in the church and you know it all then I have to say hey maybe it's time for us to get on our knees and see God but if your heart is to say hey guys look I have used to live this life before and God has totally transformed me and I don't want to live like that anymore today I want to share with you how God has changed my life my testimony then you know that you are in the right place because you're not saying you're better than other people you're just telling other people that how God has change you and today you want to share the fire that revival with those who are around you number 12 i don't want to take my children because i want them to choose for themselves what sport they like best let me tell you something if you will not raise your children up in the ways of the Lord, which the Bible talks about, train up a child in the way that he should go so that when he grows old, he will not depart from it. He's talking about the way of the Lord. If you don't train them up, then the culture, then our society will train your children up to lust, to pornography, to hatred, to unforgiveness, to sexual morality of every kind, to blasphemy, every wicked thing that there is, they will teach your children. They're already doing it. They're doing it with Disney. They're doing it with the cell phone that you give your kids at a very young age with no filters on and they're listening to whoever online and you don't even know what they're doing with that's who you're having your child trained with the world you don't want the world to train your child you want you to train your child that's why you want to bring your children to church and even more importantly you want to teach your children in your own home your home and your family is your church that you can teach your children how to walk in the ways of the lord because if you don't teach them then others will but i pray that you will teach them to follow god because we have to show them the narrow way that leads to life not the broad path that leads to destruction where the world teaches most people to go to this is so important because the signs are all around us that the coming of the lord jesus Christ is closer day by day and nobody knows exactly when but the signs are there we have to prepare for his coming you don't want to be caught off guard when he comes and he says why are you not living in my will and do my work that's why you absolutely need to watch this video right here talking about the four keys to prepare for Jesus return go watch this right here so you can be ready and also click like in this video share with other people who need to hear it until next time God bless you